Ready? Yep. Look at it. Look at it go down. That could be that could be a big fish. Aquatic ecologist Zeb Hogan is on Missouri's Osage River, searching for one of America's freshwater giants, the paddlefish. Whoa, that's a big fish. It's a monster, it's a hog. And he's found just what he's looking for. You wanna get a weight? Okay. A big fish, big female. Oh, <laughs> I can't even lift her. You ready? Oh. 77 pounds. She's ready to go back? Yep, she's ready to go. For me, the paddlefish, it's truly the craziest, weirdest fish in North America, maybe in the whole world. Paddle-like snout, very small eyes, this huge mouth that the paddlefish uses to suck food out of the water column. And these comb-like filaments strain out microscopic food. Crazy fish. Paddlefish are known in the food chain as consumers. As huge as they are, their diet consists almost exclusively of tiny plankton, which are known as producers. Producers are organisms that produce their own food, usually through photosynthesis. Consumers consume these producers, and together they make up the first and second levels in this freshwater food chain. But these paddlefish also play another role on a different food chain as a host to parasites. The silver lamprey is a parasite, and it has the most spectacular set of teeth, rings and rows of them, all so it can latch onto the flesh of its host and suck its blood. In a parasite-host relationship, one species benefits, and one is harmed. But not all relationships in nature are so one-sided. Some can be mutually beneficial. In these relationships, both organisms benefit from one another. Take the forest buffalo. It has no easy way to clean itself, so it lets these oxpeckers do all the work. And in return, the birds get an all-you-can-eat buffet of ticks, larvae, and parasites. It's a win-win for everyone. Sometimes, relationships are very one-sided, like the kind between predator and prey. To see a fierce freshwater predator firsthand, Zeb traveled to the remote Rewa River in Guyana, looking for the elusive Payara, a toothy freshwater predator who frequently dines on piranhas. Look at that. Wow. The first thing I saw, it came out of the water, it surfaced, it jumped, and I saw that mouth. All I could see was teeth. And look at that. Oh, it's a beautiful fish, freaky fish. It's such a scary looking fish. The fish shaking its head, and you can see why this fish is nicknamed the vampire fish. The fangs on the bottom jaw. On this fish, they're about two inches long. Extremely sharp. Full grown payara could have teeth up to six inches long. Not only are they razor sharp, but they're shaped like a sword. They have an edge on both sides, and they're structured to kill. All these relationships between species make up a complex food web, which is a series of overlapping food chains in a single ecosystem. Food webs are constantly changing and adapting as new animals are introduced to an area. And humans can be the greatest influencers of this by introducing new species as well as altering the environment, like here on the Ebro River in Spain. You can see how the dam alters the river. Both upstream and downstream, what once was a flowing river is now stagnant water. Stagnant water means warm water, and the invasive Wells catfish thrive in the warm water created by the man-made dam, allowing them to grow to enormous sizes. It's not this fish's fault that it's here. It, it was brought by man. It's thriving because of the activities of man. But it's a reminder to us that if we don't want invasive species in, in our rivers, that we have to keep them out of the river in the first place. He's kind of being pretty, pretty nice, huh? A food web contains an array of organisms. Producers, consumers, parasites, hosts, predators, and prey. They are interdependent, a 
and each plays a critical role in the health and maintenance of the ecosystem.